Hi there, welcome at Creative Tutorials. My name is Jelger, and in this Photoshop tutorial, we're going to look into how much fun it is to work with the blend options Photoshop offers. Um, the blend options are actually being used a lot in photos, and uh, what they basically do is they combine layers. So um, if you use one layer above the other layer and you use a blend option on it, it will give a certain effect. And we're going to look into these effects right now. Now, what we've got here is a picture of a bridge with a woman at the end. Well, basically, well, I could have taken any picture because it's not really relevant. But, well, we have to use a picture, right? Now, here's a heart. And the heart is white uh, with a black edge. Um, this is where we find the blending options. And the main blending options we will be using, you, know, you basically will be using anyway, are multiply, screen, and overlay and well sometimes stuff like the other options you can experiment with them but you will see that uh, it takes some effort to find the right use for it if we use multiply on this layer with the heart the white disappears if we use screen you will see the black edge disappear now how is this possible and why is this happening screen is as you can see under light and so well yeah. That is a little kind of a giveaway that, you know, you will see the, the white part multiplies under the dark. And so it's a, a bit of a giveaway that you will see the dark part. What it basically does is it makes the white and the light parts disappear. And the screen basically makes the dark and the black parts disappear. Now, of course, an image isn't always exactly black and white. But that's not why we're using it. We're using it to blend pictures and that way we can give structures or patterns to uh, nice photos. We can make them look old or whatever. Now, I've used the stone layer here to show you what it will do. If you look at this layer, it's just a picture of a stone wall I made somewhere on a holiday. Uh, I make this kind of pictures because I use them for uh, blending options. Um, um, you find these textures uh, on the internet everywhere, stone walls or stones, uh, metal, paper, whatever, wooters, you find it a lot. And it's really nice to use some pictures in the way we are doing it now. Now, if you use the option multiply, you will see that it's not like everything disappears, but that's obvious because there's no full white in it. So what it does is it gives a structure over the picture itself. And it makes it darker in this case, because there's a lot of dark compared to the light part in this picture. But the nice thing you see is you see the structure of the wall. And for this picture, there's not really a lot of use for it. But for other pictures, it might. Now, if you use the screen option, it does the opposite. So what you see here is the picture board becomes a lot lighter, because the light doesn't disappear, but the dark parts disappear. So the dark parts you still see are actually the background, the original photo. And the white parts, well, that's what stayed. That's the stones. Now, all fun and stuff. But what if we want to use the picture itself and we want to make it rough? We want to make it scratchy. Then we use, for example, a metal texture. This metal texture has a lot of scratches in it, so that's fun. We're going to put that on our pictures, those scratches, but we don't want to see anything of the picture or of this layer itself, except the scratches. What we do is we choose overlay. In overlay, you will still see the picture, the background, but you see all these scratches. And in the sky, it's not really fun, but well, here it looks great. And for some pictures, it's really nice and really useful. Besides, it's being used a lot in uh, well, the logo industry, or especially the industry that makes all those nice movie names and TV series names, and a lot of times they're made from stone or from wood or from iron, uh, metal. If you think, well, that's a lot of work in Photoshop to make it from metal, but it is not, because basically what it does is you make a great text like this bridge. I made it in 3D. You put the texture over it, and there you have that scratchy iron metalish look already. Uh, now, it influences the rest of the picture. So what will we do? Right click on the layer, 
choose create clipping mask and now you see that it only influenced the gray parts of this picture the rest you don't see it so isn't that amazing that's how easy it will be used and this is for example one of the real uh, options where you will be using uh, the blend mode for the blend options for because it does nice things like this now something else what's also nice is we're gonna make a texture over this text so a lot of times if you're using uh, text itself then you will find um, if you have, want to fill this color you have to choose effects and go to pattern overlay and then you have to choose a pattern and you actually have to load this pattern first and oh, there's a lot of stuff and you don't want it so there's a lot of a lot of a lot of a lot of a easier way to do this a much easier way so what do we do we have the text here and we choose to blend the stones with it so use the stone and what do we see here the black edge because it is on screen disappears and it is a stone edge if we use multiply it's the other way around but hey we don't want to have the whole picture being influenced this again what are we gonna do we're gonna do create clipping mask but then you will see something strange happen because if you create clipping mask it stays this way but if you now put it on screen then you see hey the black edge it doesn't influence it or multiply it does but it depends on if you have it on screen before you change this then it stays on screen and multiply doesn't work this is because Photoshop doesn't recognize this uh, blend as picture uh, it, re uh, it recognizes it as texture or as texture sorry as text and we don't want it if it is a type Photoshop says well you cannot just influence it with anything you do so you have to rasterize it so that Photoshop is going to see it as a picture rasterize type will not be enough in this case we have to rasterize layer style because I've made a layer style and that's the black edge so if you choose rasterize layer style you will see this actually becomes just pixels Photoshop now allows you to do whatever you want with it which means if we use screen um, sorry we don't use screen on the layer itself of course if we use screen on the stones you will see the black edge changing in stones as well and if you use a uh, multiply it's uh, the white part that disappears and become stones now that's really a lot of saving a lot of work compared to adding a texture now what's what else is really fun and what else are we using it for well people like Instagram people like Instagram because what's the thing and with Instagram you can make pictures look old now this can be done with Photoshop as well and a lot of people think oh I have to work with the adjustments and a lot of you know to make it look all a uh, lot of work no it is not because basically what does uh, make a picture look old that's right a picture becomes old when it's yellowish paper and when it's a bit of damage uh, scratchy folded uh, etc so why should we be using all kind of effects and options in Photoshop to create this if we can easily use just a piece of paper and which is yellowish and uh, spotted and damaged and etc and we put it with the option multiply we place it over the the photo you actually want to influence with it and here is your old picture now if you want to have it more visible so the picture below then you can use the opacity and you can you know adjust it a bit and you can play with it but basically this is how you you influence a picture and make it uh, look like an old picture it's very easy I would say just try it yourself you know find some textures use some pictures you have yourself uh, find some textures on the internet and co experience how to do this and if you have any questions don't matter just ask and if you like this tutorial of course 
a like will be appreciated. Thanks for watching, until the next Photoshop tutorial.